Hi, my name is Pablo Requena. I am a maker of classical Spanish guitars. And before we go into the content of this video, I would like to take this opportunity to tell you about a guitar making course that I've recently launched and it's already available uh, to purchase online. And this course is made of a series of videos which um, it will show you the complete process of how to build a Spanish guitar right from the beginning uh, to the end with no step missing and with all the information there. And this brings me to the subject of uh, this video because many of the people who have already bought this course have asked me, also some people who have just seen my videos on YouTube, but many people have asked about how to make this um, design on one of the rosettes that I use on my guitars. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. So here, if you look at this rosette, you can see that there's a few uh, elements here. And the one that we're going to be looking at is this rope, which you can see we have two bands. And it's a nice flowing element, which is made of individual pixels, um, 0.5 squares. And it goes all the way around. And even if you look up close, you can see that it flows really well. But when you look at from a sort of distance, it flows even better. So to be able to put this together, the first thing that we need to do is to, basically you need to know that this comes in sections. So this rope that goes all the way around is made of small little tiles that as they come together, they give you that flowing movement and that um, appearance of a rope going all the way around the rosette. So those little tiles, I've got some here, and in a way, what we're going to do is that to be able to explain how to do this, we're going to be sort of walking backwards in all of this. So we want to make these little tiles. And you can see that as they come together, they're all exactly the same. And let me flip this one. Yeah, that one goes there. So you can see as they come together, you get this rope, which it works really well and it looks really beautiful. You can make it in different colors. I like it in black and white because it's, you get quite a bit of contrast and it works really well for me. But basically this is, this is what we're doing. So to be able to get to these tiles, what they are is that they come from a longer road, which you can ho you go here. And you, this is a long, a long road, a long stick. And if you look at the end, you can see that you've got that design there. So what we have done is to work all these veneers, which we're going to see in a second, so that you got the design all the way along the stick. And then as we cut the stick in strips, like if it was a sausage, then we got these little tiles. So basically, then we need to know how to make a stick like this one. So to make a stick like this one, the first thing that we need to do is to basically look at these tiles and see how they put together, how you know what, how they made. So to explain that, I have done a little diagram, which I'm going to show you. So in this diagram, you can see that I've got a series of squares, black and white. And it's basically just a grid. And what I've done is to break down the combination of uh, different black and white pixels that we need to have to be able to have one tile. And then as this repeats again and again and again, we get that flow. And I've done it like this so that we can see it nice and big, so that we can actually see how it's made. So. To get to this um, arrangement, you can see that we have a series of columns here. And each one of these squares represents a 0.5 pixel. So in real size, they could be half a millimeter square. So you will see in a moment how we get to that. But what I want you to see now is that to be able to get to this combination, we're going to have we're going to look at this series of columns. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine columns. 
and you can see that column number one it's made of one black square white black white and then one two three black squares so we're going to call that column number one then column number two it's made of black white black black white black and black then the next column it's also column number two because it's actually exactly the same but it's just been flipped this way so now if we start counting from the bottom to the top we have the same combination so we have black white black black white black black which is the same combination as this one but flipped over then when we, look, when we look at the next column, we find that actually it's the same as number one as well. So you can see if we start from the top, it's black, white, black, white, and then all black. Then in this one, starting from the bottom, it's black, white, black, white, and then the rest of black. So this one is also number one. Then we go to the next column and we can see that it's not repeated anywhere, so we're going to call it number three. Then the next one, it's number four. And the next one is number five but then the following one you can see that it's also number four because again if we flip it we have one black three whites and three blacks so as you see here if you start from the top you have one black three whites and three blacks so number four is also repeated and then number three it's also repeated here so you have one black two whites and four blacks and it's the same here. One black, two whites, and four blacks. So now that you know that you have to make four different columns, four, sorry, five different columns, what I've done here is to do a little diagram so that we can work out how many, or how, you know, how many black and how many white squares we have. So for column number one, you have five black squares and two white squares. For num number two, you have five and two for column number three, also five and two. Then column number four changes slightly because now we're going to three. We're going to three whites now, so we have three whites and four blacks. And column number five, also the same. We have three whites and four blacks. So if we add them all up, we have a total of twenty-three black squares and twelve white squares. So now that we have this arrangement, what we're going to do is that we're going to cut a series of veneers. So I've got enough here to do the first column. So you're going to need to cut 23 pieces of veneer similar to this. This one, uh, let me get a ruler so that I can give you a dimension. This one is 260 millimeters long by 55 millimeters wide and all the veneers are 0.5 millimeters thick 0.5 is pretty much the standard that you're going to find available from any uh, luthier supplies uh, that you get your timber from so it's really easy to get and the black uh, again they, they supply different colors so you can change the colors here you want to and and that's fine so Basically, you're going to cut 23 black pieces and you're going to cut 12 white pieces. This one is a little bit all over the place, but it'll be fine because we're going to be clamping them and so on. So I've got here enough just to make the first one because, you know, all the other ones are done exactly in the same way. All you need to do is to change the sequence and the position of the black and the white, but they're going to be built exactly in the same way. So I'm just going to show you one of them. So for column number one, we have one black, one white, one black, one white, and three blacks, which one, two, and three, which I've got here. So this is what I need to do to make the first column that I have here. So once I have all of this glued up together, uh, to glue this together, we're going to make a gluing block. So this gluing block is made of plywood. It's got tape 
in the area where, the, where everything is going to be glued up because I don't want the excess glue coming out from the paninis to, to stick into the, into, the, um, into the plywood. And what we're going to do is that because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have seven paniers, then we know that the total thickness is 3.5 millimeters. So what we're going to do is that we are going to make two strips to go on the edges and the strips need to be 3.5 millimeters or the same thickness as these paneers together and if this is 55 millimeters wide you want your block to be a little bit wider so that you have a little bit of room in both sides you don't want to make the block too tight because you're going to have all sorts of problems okay so you want to have a little bit of space if you have a bit more is probably even better and what you're going to do is to glue all these paneers. They're going to come together into this block. We have tape in here. We're going to clamp them up and you're going to clamp them for 24 hours. When you take them out, they're going to look like this. But they won't be fully dry because there's quite a bit of glue on them. And also, even though they're dry-ish, there's not enough air circulating and it does take a little bit of time for the, to, the glue to cure properly. So what you're going to do is to bring them out and allow them to dry further for another 24 hours. However, if you just leave them on the bench like that, what will happen is that as they dry, they will start curling and twisting and they'll be all over the place. And they'll be quite hard to work with. So instead of just leaving them on, leaving them on the bench, what you need to do is to get a couple of blocks. I'm going to use this just so that you can see as an example. Put them in between two blocks and just lightly clamp them together. Not too tight, just lightly. And that way they're going to carry on drying and by the time you take them out they will hold the shape that much better. These ones I've glued them some time ago and even though they're not too bad they have already capped a little bit. For me that is not a big issue because I'm going to be cutting slices, it's not too difficult. But you want to bear that in mind, that you don't want them to deform too much. So now that we have our five stacks of paneers, our five sandwiches, you have here, you can see we've got number one, two, three, four and five of them, which are the ones that we need. We don't need to make one for each single column, we need to make one for each not repeated column okay so that's why we only have five so what we're going to do is that because we have two of most of them in fact we actually have two of all of them except for um, number five of number five there's only one column that is not repeated so what that means is that we are going to plane these edges nice and carefully in your shooting board both of them and then you're going to set up your bandsaw and you're going to cut very thin strips of these edges okay you can see this was as wide as this you can see this is already a lot thinner and it's because i've cut a few strips already and i've made a few rosettes out of this so it means that with with this sort of sizes you can get quite a few rosettes out of it so once you plane this up and you cut them very thinly in your bandsaw, what you want to do is to cut them roughly about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a millimeter thick. You don't want to cut them any thicker because then it's just creating more work for you for yourself for later. But you don't want to cut them too thinly because then you can cut them too thin and then they'll, they'll be useless. So what will happen is that you will be cutting these strips and they will look like this. So I've got them all together in here. Let me just bring them to um, each one of the blocks where they belong. So this one is number. Um, okay, so I've got here one black and two whites. So this one is number three yeah 
which is number three there. So I've got this one here, then this one is the same. No, this one is got three, so that is number four, this one here, then this one it's got two black and three whites. I think this one is number five. Yeah, so that's number five. This one is one black and three whites, which is this one, one black and three whites. This one is one black, two whites, and so it's like this one, so this one goes there. Then this one is black, white, black, black, and white. So this one is number two. Yeah. I'm, I'm struggling to see them because <laughs> of my lights and my eyes, so it is not amazing anymore. But anyway, um, basically I'm just bringing them back to where they came from so that I can explain this to you. Okay, so there they are. So you can see I've got two strips out of each one of these sandwiches, but only one from number five. And each one of these strips, when I cut it in the band, so they were about 0.7 or 0.8 of a millimeter thick. So uh, you need to thickness them down to 0.5 of a millimeter. I'm not gonna explain how to do this because it's a little bit time consuming and this is information that you already have in the online course that you can that you can purchase. So it's no point to go over that again. But basically, um, once you have this down to 0.5 of a millimeter, it means that the end grain here, each one of these dots, it's 0.5 of a millimeter square, which if you remember, this is what we said here, that each one of these squares represent a 0.5 of a millimeter square. It's just blown up so that we can see what we're doing. So now that you have all of them down to 0.5, what we want to do is to bring them together in the right order so that we have this uh, design at the end grain or at the end of the stick here. So that's what we're gonna do. So we get Number one first, and we it's important whether the strip goes up this way or the other way, so bear that in mind. So I'm gonna start with the single, basically like in here, with the single black at the top. So I have number one here, then I'm going for number two, which also has one black at the top and then one white and then two white, so this goes like that. Then number two, which is the same one, but this time it goes the other way around. So the single black needs to go down like this. This is very important that you don't get mixed up because if you don't put them in the right sequence and also in the right way up or down, then this is not gonna work. Then we go back to number one and the single black goes down. So it goes in like this. Then we have number three, which I've got one here, and it has the single black down, so we're gonna bring it in like that. Then we have number four, also with the single black down. So number four with the single black down. Then number five, now, number five, you can see that is two blacks, three whites, and two blacks. So it doesn't really matter if it goes this way or the other way. Whichever way we fit it, it will work. It just needs to go in the right order, but it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. Then we have number four with the black to the top. So we have number four here with the black to the top. And then number three with the single black to the top as well. So you can see that as they all come together, there is your design. And that looks exactly like what we were hoping for. Right, so now what we need to do is to find a way 
of gluing all these strips together, making sure that they all retain the right sequence and the right order and so on. So I'm going to bring them together with a clip or with, you know, with a bit of tape or something, whichever way uh, you want to do it, with whatever you have in your workshop, because what I'm going to show you now, it's a little, a little jig, a little block that I've made to be able to glue all of this accurately because all of this is very small and very fiddly and to be able to glue this together you want to make sure that all the strips line up really well and they all compress also as evenly as possible. So to do that we are going to use a block like this one. Now you don't need to make one as complicated as this one which to be honest I mean it's not that complicated but you don't need to have all this metal and so on. This is just to use as a clamp, so you could just clamp this instead of having this metal with, with these bolts. But what you have here basically is you have two pieces of MDF. This is 10 millimeters uh, MDF. And in between them, you have this piece of wood, which is 3.5 millimeters thick, which is also the same thickness as all these sandwiches which means that it's also the same thickness or the same width as all these strips. So you can see that they all will fit in here very nicely. And then I've worked it out in such a way, let me open it up so that you can actually see how it's made and where we're going with this. Oops, don't go anywhere. So, as I open it, you can see I have brown tape because that's going to stop the glue from getting everything stuck together. And I have these pins, which all they're going to do is to help me to bring this together every time uh, quickly and easily. So, that does a very nice job for me. So here you have one side have the 3.5 millimeters block stuck to it and covered with tape. And then it's not in the other one, but this sort of lid or top, if you look at this, uh, which way does it go? It goes this way. So you can see that it's the same thickness. I've just glue it on into this piece of MDF and as it comes down what you have left here is just the same width as this stack of paneers together so this will come into here very nicely so as I clamp this into here it's only so far I can clamp and it means that everything is going to be even which for me it's quite important to make sure that the job is easier for me later on. So what we're going to do is that we're going to actually glue these ones together. We're going to put them in here and you can see actually how it's done. It's very simple and it's just a very quick process. So I'm just going to prepare here and I'm just going to glue them. And then you can see how easy this is. So what I'm going to do is to get a little bit of masking tape and I'm going to put it in my bench here because this is the area where I'm going to be doing some gluing and I don't want to get the, the, the bench messed up with glue. And I'm going to use a brush. I always keep them in water because the glue that I'm going to use is tight bond and tight bond is um, is water based so it means that if the brush is in water I can just clean it up a bit and use it every time rather than let it dry and then I have to throw it in the bin so I got a brush here then I need a bottle with glue which I've got here again this this is just a bottle where I empty um, some of the type one that I buy in a bigger bottle so it doesn't say anything here but it's normal tight one and so what is it here? So what we're going to do 
is that to make sure that we glue them in the right order and following the right sequence, we are going to hold them from one end and we're just going to open them up a bit like this, as if this was a fan. And we're just going to make sure that they don't overlap or, or they are one on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you want to see them all like this. And I think I'm going to need a bit more tape. So I'm going to put them back together again. Sorry about this. And I'm going to put one more um, strip of tape in here. So doing it this way, you can also lay them out in the bench and then put a bit of glue and put them in, glue and in, but this is also a very easy, quick way of doing it. So open them up carefully, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you count them up, then you know that they're not one on top of each other. So once you have them like this, what we're going to do is to put a little bit of glue in each one of them. This one actually, the first one doesn't need that much, but the other ones, you just want to have a thin line of glue in all of them. And you can see that I'm not going all the way up because I can't, I'm holding them here, so I can't really go all the way up, but you'll see that that doesn't matter too much. I'm going to go down this side because it'll be easier to show it, like this. As you can see, I don't have a huge amount of glue, but I want to make sure that I have a little bit on each one of them. And there. This one, actually, I'm not going to use. So, now all you need to do is to get your brush and brush everything in very nicely. And make sure that you cover the whole surface because you want this to be very nicely stuck together. And if you don't have glue somewhere, there might be a chance that as you cut in this, this log later on, you could have um, pieces that could break off. So you want to make sure that that's not going to happen. So I'm just putting a bit of glue in areas where there's not so much. There you are, like that. Now I'm going to bring them all together back to where, how they were. And before compressing them too much, I want to make sure that they all go in the right way. So this is all good. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hold it from the other end and I'm going to open up this other side. Now it's a little bit more tricky because we have the glue, but it's doable. Uh, you just need to work quickly because the glue is starting to stick everything together, but you just need to make sure that they all separate. And of course, this is getting all the glue in my fingers, but that's okay. Right, so now that they all open up again, like so, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on these ends, and I'm going up a bit more than I need because that's the area where I have actually removed some of the glue with my fingers. So now I can just do this again.
and this the first one I don't need to actually put any glue even though I did put some before now I can put my glue on the glass so come around this side yeah so now what I'm going to do it's the glue is starting to set here but it's still workable so just do it slowly until you get all the strips in the right place and everything lining up very nicely very nicely here and let me see okay there so now that I can see that all the strips are more or less lining up also in this area I want to actually open them up because they go a little stuck as I was holding them yeah but that's fine so now I can get them all and bring them into this block like this and then I can close the block up and as I close them up all the veneers are gonna come together sideways like this so you can see they all line up this way so now I'm gonna get the bolts here which are gonna work as a clamp So I'm going to do it just by hand and then I will tighten it up later. And then I've got my pushing stick, which it goes on the top. And you can see it needs a little bit of pressure for it to go down to compress all the strips in the right way. So what I'm going to do is to remove this tape from here. And now I'm going to get a few clamps. So one in here. So now I can also, I've got an Allen key here and I can tighten this up a bit. just as a check what we can do if I put this in the vise like that then I can get a chisel like this one And I can cut this end you know these are all the ends of the strips that are sticking out 
which we're not going to need and this is a way of lining them up but also it's a way of confirming that we've done this right by now it's probably a little late so you want to know that you've done it right first from the word go but you can see here is the design and everything is working well so basically we're gonna leave this in here for 24 hours and when we bring it out tomorrow it will look like this one and then all we need to do is to make a little jig so that we can cut them up into little strips again I'm not gonna explain how to do that because I've done that in other videos I think I've got that in other videos on YouTube but also in the course that you can you can buy it's also explained there so it's no point to go over that again but basically once you cut all of this in slices then this is what you get those little tiles and now they're ready to be used and to be fitted into your rosette so I hope that you find this video helpful and um, this is as much as I can explain to you about this so until the next time